really I'm really excited to share this story with you all. This is a treasure to me, and um, yeah, this is my first time sharing this publicly and just sharing this whole, just sharing what this means to me, and um, yeah, you'll see. Just, you will see. So when I, when I think about food, um, I think about the moments and the moments when I realized what food meant to people. I never really thought about it, you know, like we just eat things and it's just whatever, like you're hungry, you consume, you feel better, maybe you're hangry, maybe you're not. But, but that moment when I realized that food had like a deeper meaning that I didn't realize in my cultural identity. And so the moment I realized that was about three years ago when I was in this program called Mission Year. And one of my teammates, Brandon Takadena, was from Hawaii, ironically. So our stories are tying together in this. And he's Polynesian, he's Samoan Tokelauan. And so he came to Philadelphia in this identity. And there was a disconnect there in which things that were familiar to him, he could not find in Philadelphia. And then I came to Philadelphia too. And things that were familiar to me, I could find in Philadelphia. And I remember the moment when we went to Asia Town. Um, we were going grocery shopping, it was all of us, because Brendan had said he wanted to get stuff for the team, and we were all like, we didn't have a lot of money because we were on this program, like a really tight budget, and so we all went to the, it was like this Asian grocery store, right? And so for me, I'm like from Akron, I'd never been in a different kind of food context, and so, you know, we walk up, and like the doors open to this like giant grocery store, and I watched Brandon, like his face just lit up. He was like, oh, guys, look. And he said this, this, this. He starts pointing out all these things. And I'm looking and I'm like, I have no idea what anything is. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I have no idea how to make anything out of what I'm seeing. And that moment, that moment freaked me out, y'all. Because that was a moment I realized I didn't know anything about the world. I didn't know a single thing. I was like, man, I have been going to Acme my whole life, and there's a place I can go that is like Acme, except I don't know anything. I don't know a single thing. That was humbling, all right? So I'm stepping in that. I'm just, I'm just sitting in the reality of, of that, that moment when you realize you don't know. And you, you can have two choices. When you realize you don't know anything, you can just kind of be quiet, or you can act like you know something. And usually we act like we know something. We're like, oh, well, this is actually how the world works. But no, you know, I'm just I'm like, all right, I'm just going to chill here and just kind of just receive the fact I don't, I don't know a thing. Like, <laughs> the world is way bigger than I am, and that's okay. And so Brandon taught me many things that year. Because I watched him, and I watched him in a context that wasn't his home. And I watched him navigate a world that wasn't like the one he came from. And that taught me a lot, because... I realized that food is deeper than just eating. Like food is a symbol of who we are. What we eat connects us. And so when he would make spam fried rice for us and share it as a team, like share it to our team, he was sharing a part of himself with us. He was sharing culture. He was sharing where he comes from. He was sharing just something that meant a lot to him. And so when I moved back to Akron after mission year, I kind of, kind of didn't really know what to do with any of that, you know? Like, I'm just, I can go to Acme, I'm just cruising, I'm like, okay, Cheez-Its, macaroni and cheese, I'm set, I know what's going on here. But there was, there was something deeper in that for me, this, this reality of, like, food being a connector. And so, the last two years, as I've kind of, you know, been exploring this thought here in Akron, like, what is, what is connection, what is people, how are we all together in different things? Like, um... I find, I find my journey going back to very specific moments and very specific instances. For example, when I went to Hawaii, I had poke. And that was my first time having poke. And ironically, it's, it's a really fun story. That's a whole, this is a whole other story of how I had poke. I was at a young adult Catholic retreat that I got invited to when I was at a monastery with the sister. It's a long story, it's a good one. We're gonna table it. But I ended up at this adult Catholic retreat, all right? And so we're cruising in the back of the truck, going to the grocery store. 
Um, shore, shore's right there on the right, and my hair's flying in the wind, and we're going down the road. We pull into the grocery store, and um, we're getting food for the barbecue, and I'm like, what do you bring to a barbecue when you're in Hawaii? I have no idea. I have no idea. Like, I don't think chicken's gonna fly here. Beef, corn, apples, that's Midwest. I don't really know. I don't know where I am. And so I was thinking, okay, like, what, where am I? And what means something here? And I remembered poke. Poke means something here. I think if, if I, this, this outsider, if I bring poke to the barbecue, I think I'm going to be saying I love you. I think that's what that means, right? And so I kind of, you know, I went up to Rhea and I said, hey, Rhea, like, I, can, I, can I bring poke to the barbecue? Like, there's a little poke bar here. And she's like, yes, poke! Let's go! So I'm like, okay, okay, what kinds do I get? Like, I don't know, I've never had this before. And, you know, before you know it, we're scooping up these giant containers of poke and we're throwing it in the back of the truck and we're going back to the church and we're having a retreat. We're having a barbecue and I'm having poke for the first time. It's delicious. It's, I, man, I wasn't ready. It's just real good. It's real good. <laughs> I was like, okay, raw fish. I didn't know because Akron, but hey, you know, you know, it's real good. So I think of that moment, right? Food, what does food mean in that moment? And then I think about another moment too, right? And this moment was when I was um, on the Nav Navajo Nation this past year. And we, we, <laughs> this cracks me up, this story does. <laughs> we, uh, um, so the last day we were there, we were there for a week and I was, it was a trip with natives and non-natives and I was a non-native on this trip that's kind of a, a listening trip, right? And, um, so the last day we were there, we kind of, we, uh, we, we slaughtered a mutton, we had mutton. I don't, I don't know the words, I don't know how to talk about this. But we, there was a sheep, Isaac had a sheep, and he brought a sheep, and we like, killed it together, butchered it together, and then ate it together, right? So then I experienced food as this like, bonding experience of like, from start to finish together in community. And... You know, like these things are really normal in their context, right? Like mutton feasts are really normal, poke is really normal. And like, to be fair, here, like mac and cheese is really normal. But we don't really think about mac and cheese because we're in Akron. And sometimes I think our journeys have to take us other places before we can see ourselves more deeply. And when I think about food, those are the things I think about. How I, haven't, I wasn't able to see food until I saw someone else see food until I saw in the eyes of my friend Brandon that look when he was in the grocery store and he saw things that were familiar to him, it was only then that I realized that the things I took for granted were familiar to me. And I think that often when our stories bring us to those places of connection with people, that that's when our lives are richer, when we open up and receive. Thank you.